Okay, so good morning, almost long actually for you guys. Um, my name is Natalia Telles. I'm a researcher here at the Remote Sensing and GIS Laboratory at the Federal University of Goiás in Brazil, uh, La Figue. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. I'm sorry for not being there in person. Uh, and thank you, Beatrice, and to all Open Earth Monitor team for having me online. I'm like, really excited to be talking to you guys. Uh, so, I'm going to be presenting a work on mapping out the wooded lands. Uh, this was part of a collaborative effort with WWF. Um, at the end of last year, Daniel Silva, Silva from WWF reached out to us with the challenging of developing a large-scale mapping approach for those uh, specific regions. And uh, their aim was to advocate for including other wooded lands under the European Union Re Deforestation Regulation, which which currently focus only on forest ecosystems. So we embraced that challenge and started working on that. So just a contextualization, according to the FAO definition, other wooded land refers to areas with five to 10% tree cover and more than 10% cover of shrubs, bushes, and trees. But the thresholds are, are not so clear, being really challenged, by, especially to segregate um, forests from other wooded lands sometimes, especially through visual inspection. Uh, and while these ecosystems uh, aren't classified as far as these disfragmented wooded lands, they serve as vital corridors connecting larger forest areas and facilitating vital animal movements. They also play a vital, a crucial role in carbon storage. So our main objective were to first develop the FAO's definition and second, uh, to define a scalable process that could be applied across large cities. So three diverse uh, landscapes were chosen based on expert input encompassing natural regions globally and represents, representing the, the three main land cover classes that we had the interest on. So forests, other wooded lands and grassland and understanding uh, the thresholds, the transitions between those areas. So those regions were uh, Sofala in Mozambique, uh, Goiás in Brazil in the Cerrado Bayon, and Albacete Asia in, in Spain. And for each area of interest, uh, we selected a Sentinel-2 tile that entirely covered this area. So these tiles, um, they were further divided into smaller grids of one kilometer by one kilometer to facilitate uh, a stratified random sampling approach. A reference map was then generated using uh, land cover products, existing land cover products for each of these areas of interest. These maps were reclassified into five classes, forests, other wooded lands, grasslands, croplands, and others. And they only served as a foundation for the sample strategy used to generate, generate this, the training samples, okay, that were later used on this model. Um, and to ensure a robust sampling, we employed a stratified random sampling uh, with this, within the selected region. Uh, this approach was employed in three stages. The first strata uh, include areas with three similar quantity of land use land clover, land clover classes. A second one was the main class, a uh, main land clover, land clover class of pixel. And the third strata was an intersection, a fusion of those the first two, and we targeted a margin of error of 5% with, uh, with, the, with a 95 uh, confidence interval. The amount of one kilometer by one kilometer grid visually inspected varied per scene. For Mozambique, for example, we had 174 grids being visually inspected, and that ended up with over 1.7 million samples per scene. Uh, and then that's when we reach a problem. Uh, Google Earth Engine has a processing limit of 10,000 pixels per classifier model and directly using all those pixels, all those training samples for the model, for training the model can be computationally expensive. So to solve this, uh, we first, uh, sorry, just a quick water. Uh, so we first, uh, the pixels with identical land cover classes labels. 
such as all forests or grasslands within each grid, they were merged into homogeneous polygons. This reduced uh, redundancy in the sam sampling train, uh, sampling data, uh, as a single polygon represents a large and more uniform area serves as the same purpose of a multiple uh, individual cells. So to ensure each class is adequately represented, we also had a maximum number of points sampled within each homogeneous polygon per grid, and they were sorted proportionally to the area occupied by the class within this one kilometer by one kilometer grid. So if a forest class, for example, a uh, forest class polygon covers 60% of the grid, a higher number of points would be sampled from it compared to another, uh, another class, a smaller other woodland class, for example. And uh, we also applied a minimum distance criterion, considering the minimum area requirement of 0 0.5 hectares for evaluating other wooded land, as is defined by FAO. Uh, and this, this means the points are not placed closer than a predefined threshold from each other. At each other. With this process, we reduced the amount of samples per scene to less than 10,000 um, training points, making the machine learning process more manageable and improving uh, computational efficiency. So for the mapping, uh, we utilized data from 2022 encompassing a six-month uh, window before and after the year of interest, a uh, totally then two years, and a total of 174 metrics were calculated on data from various sources to characterize those land cover for other wooded land modeling. So from Sentinel, two data like spectral bands, this ray light corrected nine, nine times day and night data, uh, several, several, several uh, variables were used in this process. Uh, the processing was conducted using Google Earth Engine. Um, a random forest algorithm was employed and included uh, 500 decision trees, and that model output was a multi-probability map for each land of the, those land cover classes that we were mapping. So uh, this is uh, the result, the predicted result for other wooded lands uh, using this modeling-based random forest, and it showed an average global accuracy of 74.9%. For producer uh, and user accuracies, an average of 60.7%, the graph on the left, for producer, and 60.9, 69 69.2% uh, was found that for the user accuracy. Specifically for Sofala region, Mozambique, the model performance uh, to this, detect this and differentiate the other wooden land from this other land, land cover and land use classes, uh, it, it performed poorly, sustaining most of this confusion with the, with the grassland class, where the omission was around 33.7%. Um, so because of that, we, like, we had a lot of confusion with both forest and grassland, but confusions between other woodlands and the grass are particularly more challenging. So we tested combining the forest and other wooded land into a single land cover class. And the results uh, uh, illustrated here is the spatial distribution of this new classification, the forest, other wooded lands, grassland, and other land cover uh, across those, those same three, three regions. And with this combined, uh, with that combined class, we achieved an overall global accuracy of 82.9% in distinguishing between these land cover types. Uh, and the detection precision for the combined forest and other woodland class was 87.5%. Um, so uh, here, as the omission errors represents areas that should have been classified as particular land cover type, but were not. For Mozambique, Brazil, and Spain, for example, we encountered, encountered uh, notable omissions in the other wooded land class, mixing up uh, with grasslands, reaching out to 14.4% uh, for Mozambique, for example. And when we look at the commission errors, I don't know if it's passing this line. Yeah. 
so for the commission errors, again, we see still confusion between the other wooded lands and grasslands. This is a recurring issue due to, to the similarity in spectral and structural properties of those landscapes. And by merging the forest and other wooded land plants with, uh, in our map, we were able to reduce some of this confusion, but there are still significant challenges. So mapping other wooded lenses is still a challenge due to all these confusions with these lower vegetations, uh, but it is scale, it's feasible uh, when we think of integrating advanced remote sensing techniques. Uh, Mozambique landscapes prove to be more difficult, more challenging, especially especially for image interpretation. That's a problem we were having in another project as well. And now we are trying to segregate uh, shrublands from grasslands and improving uh, those samples. And going forward, we will be refining our approach to improve the classification of other woodlands and in order to do, reduce those errors. We also did run uh, a validation using Sentinel-2 data, like LiDAR data, I don't have the results here for, for you today, uh, but if you have any questions and you're interested in understanding a little bit more of this work, uh, I'm free to, for you to reach out to me via email or LinkedIn. And if you have any questions, let, let us know. Me and my team will be uh, open to, to solve them. And thank you very much for all of your attention.